Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and a lot of people say to me, You play Warcraft like an elite superhuman. I wish I had your skills. So it's time for me to spill the beans, so you, Johnny No Skills, can glide through the game just as I do. First of all, what are you doing controlling the game with these? You're going to be playing this game for hours and hours. This will just result in you reaching the carpool tunnel goal quicker. Map the controls to your DualShock 4 and then sit back and let hours of your life waste away, safe in the knowledge that you'll still be able to have one off the wrist in a few years time. But however, if you're just a poor PC exclusive gamer, peering through the windows and drooling at these members of the PS4 Master Race with their God of War and their Skyrim, well, you're stuck with shitty mouse and keyboard, so you may as well use them to their full potential. You might have seen people use the mouse to turn their characters around. No man can live at this speed! You'll give yourself a fit and then you're out the game. You've got to think long term. There are buttons on your keyboard that will move your character to keep you in the game. WASD? No! You're making things too complex. Look at those arrow keys, they are already labelled up and ready to go, they are your way to becoming a champion like me. By a country mile, the most important key is the one that allows your character to walk backwards. Backpedalling is a surefire way to tell if someone is playing the game at an elite level. <laughs> Don't let other YouTube guides give the impression that binding your spells to certain buttons is a good idea. I mean, look at this. Charge, cleave, heroic strike, rend, and then with the shift key held down, challenging shout, hamstring, devastate. Who the hell wants to remember all of that? Now, you might think that clicking your spells in the action bar would be the answer to this, but then you fall into the trap of having to remember what all the icons represent. And unless you're fucking Rain Man, that ain't never gonna happen. The way a pro like me plays is to select the mob that you want by clicking on it with your mouse. Then in the text box at the bottom of the screen, type slash cast and then the name of your spell. You're not gonna get so high one night that you forget simple names like Fireball, Charge, or Demonic Circle, colon, Teleport. Now, you might have spotted a weakness in this strategy, and that is AOE attacks. Now don't worry, because I've got you covered there too. When the area of effect marker appears on the ground, you might be tempted to click on that ground area where the mobs are. Don't do this. Why? Because true experts use the minimap. When you see that area of effect marker, click the area in the minimap that you want the spell to be used. Now what could be easier than that, fool? <laughs> Now, a large part of the game is gaining experience points so you can increase your player's level. Now, I beat Ragnaros while still level one in nothing but starter gear, but I don't expect you to pull off the same god level ability that I possess. So what advice can I, the greatest Warcraft player of all time, pass on to you, the unwashed masses? Well, for a start, once you've passed the starting area, you want to hit the Eastern Plaguelands almost right away. The mobs there are really high level and will send you up about five levels per kill. Now, if you're just a scrub, or even worse, a horde, how are you going to beat mobs 50 levels higher than you? Well, you're going to need a lot of luck. So make sure you equip gear that has a high luck stat. If you equip a stack of items with luck stats, you are going to have a much better chance of critting for over 9,000 damage per hit. You start doing that, and then the high level mobs will be so scared of you, they'll suck your dick. Stop dodgy, you don't want the YouTube fun police coming after you again. Don't worry Flair, the mobs will just suck your sandwich until they have gentlemen's relish dripping down their chins. <laughs>
Now, obviously, those with less skill than myself, or as they're more commonly known, the Horde, are going to need to form groups to take down raid bosses. Now, there's a surefire strategy to win every fight with ease. First, make sure you're playing as a warrior tank. If you're not, then you'll need to re-roll. I don't care if you're a level 60 mage with full tier 3 armor. You've done it wrong. Now, you need to fill the remaining 39 raid slots with holy priests. This is an easy task, as there are so many people playing this class. All you got to do now is make sure you hold aggro on all the mobs and just let the rest of the raid heal you. Simple. And if you make a misstep and a few healers die, it's okay. You have 39 of them. Losing three or four won't hurt. With this method, not only will you top the recount lists with ease, but you won't have to argue with any hunters over who should get what weapon. This method is 100% foolproof, but may take a little bit extra time for each kill, but that won't matter one bit. What about enraged timers? And now the warrior guide! <laughs> What I've told you so far is obviously important, but knowing a warrior's correct ability rotation and just having the know-how on the right way to play the class is paramount. So let's run through these things right now. With gear, we've already spoken about the luck stat being important, but so is stacking intelligence. If your warrior is not very smart, you won't be able to read the minimap or understand the quest objectives that you are given. Take this example. With enough intelligence on your gear, you can clearly make out that this quest is to get back some stolen cheese. Everything is clear and you know what to do. However, with no intelligence on your gear, this is how the same quest looks. You have not got a hope in hell of beating this quest with such a dumb character. Saying about cheese, I don't know. After level 40, you could equip plate armor, but this will only slow you down. So stick to either leather or mail items. As far as weapon choices go, dual wielding is a big no-no. You can swing one sword around much faster than you can swing two. So pick a nice short sword to cut your enemies up with. Now we should talk about the rotation. You want to start each fight by using hamstring to cause a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Follow this up with popping perception, which is clearly the greatest racial talent in the game. Then end the rotation with a mocking blow. You are now equipped with all the knowledge you need to know about being an elite, uber skilled ponage master at World of Warcraft. Go out there and own the game. Dodgy, I can see you are about to end the video, but you've not hit the 10 minute mark that YouTube require. You'll need one more minute's worth of content. Turn it in. Hey, stop.